Okay, so this will be the actual pet analysis, registering the pet data to the MR data, and uh, applying the regions and doing the kinetic analysis. So we'll do all of that through the Fuseit module. This time we'll see how long it takes to come up. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, so this is, all the modules have very similar features. Um, just different workflows. So for registration of pet data to MR, uh, the first thing you need is the input data, which will be the pet data. Um, so you load that and um, <clears throat> there is a memory, so um, I usually just navigate based on that. And so we'll use the 21i data again, 262 day 7. And um, I'll actually load two data sets. Uh, first, I'll load, um, I always reconstruct it in two ways. One is in um, the data into two frames, and then one is a dynamic pet data set. The first we'll load is the two frame data. And we'll do that with operations. And I'm going to reset this, or not reset this. And so what we do is a uh, back to front. And let's just take a look at it. And so the back to front for the pet data is essentially all you need. <clears throat> to register it to the MR. For the two frame data set, um, we only want the second frame, and so we'll do this select frames, and we'll only load the second frame. Um, and actually, for the pilot data set, you'll have to do these registrations separately because the data was reconstructed on two different matrix sizes. So the two frame data was reconstructed on a 256 by 256 and the dynamic data was reconstructed on a 128 by 128 matrix. And so that will cause the two data sets to have separate um, registrations. <coughs> so just be aware of that. Um, so we'll load that, then we'll pin the data set, and we'll load the second one. Uh, so this will be what we can do for the, um, any data sets for the dibs and beyond. So um, when you're loading this data set, make sure to load all of the frames of the data, not just a single frame. So unselect the select frames. And again, back to front, and we'll load that. And so now we should have two data sets loaded. Um, the single frame from the... Yes. Uh, double frame reconstruction, and then the dynamic pet data set. For the registration, we'll want to use just the, the single frame. Oh, okay. And so the next step yeah, will be course. to load the reference data set, which is the MR, the T2 weighted. Okay, great. See you there. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we select that. And now you want to make don't double click it, um, just select it and then open with operations. And again, we'll switch it from natural to 180 degree because that's how we load the MR data. And then what you should see is the initial overlay of the pet data set to the MR. Uh, MR is a little dark, so you can switch over to the reference tab to adjust the contrast. 
Um, and for this, I always like the cold um, color scale for the pet data. But you can, if, if you feel something else is more appropriate for you, uh, that's fine. Um, I'll adjust the contrast on that. And just to help me a little bit, sometimes I uh, weight it a little more towards the MR data set for the color blending. <coughs> so once you have something that you like looking at for the registration, the first step is um, going to the manual re registration tool, which is this tab up here. Um, it's the reslicing tab. And what you'll see is that you get access to this little square. And if you hold in the middle of that, you can drag the pet data around. And you can do that in any of one of the windows. Um, actually adjust the pet a little more. And there, there are a few things I look for in the registration uh, between the two data sets. Uh, this one looks like it may have gone directly from PET to MR uh, without having been woken up, because just a, a simple sliding back and up and down um, kind of corrects for it. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much rotation that's necessary at all. <coughs> So one thing that I look for is this red spot in the pet data. Um, it looks like it's, it's in the upper palette of the animal, and it seems to always fit in this kind of V-shape. Um, and then also, uh, a lot of the times for uh, DFP-injected animals, you'll see, uh, I think this is in the thalamus, and if you scroll through the MR data, what you'll see is this kind of circular um, where the ventricle uh, kind of circles around the uh, brain tissue. And a lot, of, a lot of times that's a good indicator for um, where the registration needs to go. Um, I do look at all three views, though. And I also use the throat as kind of a marker. So the hard palate in the um, the hard palate in the mouth uh, tends to be a good indicator of the registration. So if you uh, come down, if you drag down in the axial view to where the throat is, you can look at it in the horizontal view as well to see how things are lining up, and you can kind of change the blending. But you can kind of you can start to see the correlation between the black areas in the MR and the lack of uptake in the pet, um, both in the throat and this area. So if you scroll through the horizontal, you can kind of see in the brain where there's activity uptake around the outside of the brain and how that should be oriented around it. Um, <clears throat> since there's defluorination of the radio tracer, the fluorine goes to the bone, and so that's why you see the hot spots here. Uh, so this is the jawbone, and that tends to be a good indicator of um, registration. And so if, if, if the animal had woken up, you might see something like this. And so then you would just kind of rotate it so that you get a good overlay on both sides. Um, and <coughs> this, so this is manual registration. Uh, once you get it into a good location, you can check um, if uh, 
the uh, automated method for matching um, can do a good job. Uh, it doesn't always, so um, sometimes I fall back on the uh, manual registration if this doesn't work. But if you hit, um, so we do a rigid registration, and you can hit this match button. and it will look for a best fit. Um, and I think in this case, uh, it actually didn't do a good job in the registration because you can see that it's now pretty off. Um, so when you do that, it dumps you into the matched region uh, if we go back to the reference, then um, there is something ab about this. Uh, once, it, once it matches it, it crops it. And so you can go all the way back to the beginning. Typically what I do is close that and reload the two-frame data set. And each time you load a data set, you should look at the uh, operations because they'll have changed. And also take a look at the selected time, um, because it will remember the last thing what, that was loaded. And if the MR data was loaded, it only had one frame, and so it'll revert to the single to the first frame, even for the pet data. <coughs> so. through this again. Once you get good at this, um, kind of, the registrations will come become pretty fast. Um, especially in the manual. So the other thing that you can look for is uh, right up here where the ventricle is. Uh, that tends to be a little bit of a good indicator. If the eyes are in the image, um, so on this one, they're just outside. Um, uh, you can use the eyes as well. That looks pretty good. Oh, I'll also take a look back here in the cerebellum uh, because that's sometimes a good indicator of rotation um, in this direction. And you can see how it kind of affects it. Um, but you kind of want to make sure that in the cerebellum, you don't have this kind of um, seeping of the skull into the cerebellum because that'll affect the uh, results of the kinetic modeling. So I'll typically take a look at that to make sure that it's well aligned or, or well rotated. <coughs> And I think I may have over-rotated because then in the front you have that. And so it may just be that um, instead of a rotation, it's a, just a translation. Uh, 
you won't be able to get it perfect because there is some partial volume effect where there's um, activity that comes from because of the um, resolution of the scanner there will be some uh, seepage from the bone into other areas um, so if if the automate is not working, you can just skip that. Um, but you do need to save the uh, registration, the transformation. And so if you're saving it out from just the reference uh, area of this module, then you, while you're on this tab, you just hit Save Transformation. And I usually keep a separate directory of all the transforms. <coughs> and I have that here. And so we can actually um, see what my see how I did compared to what I did originally. Um, and this will be useful because this is how we'll register the dynamic data set. So it was pretty close. It just moved a tiny bit. Um, to, to register, so once you have the registration matrix for the um, single frame, you can switch the data set over to the dynamic. And um, you can't see anything now because um, it's probably in a frame where there's not much data. So if you really crank the intensity down, you can start to see the PET signal. Um, and if you come back to the reslicing tool and open the transformation, uh, let's see, this is 262 day seven, uh, then you can see now the um, so one of the, you can right click on the threshold bar and expand so that then you can get a, a expand the low dynamic range out so that you can kind of see the pet data. And now you can run through. So at early frames there is no data because the injection hasn't occurred and if you step through this, you'll at some point. Uh, so by frame 14, uh, the activity has started to come into the animal. And then you can start to see how the activity redistributes throughout the animal. So then, once you have the data registered, you can go right to the VOI. And for some reason, there's a little bug. Um, so the A data set is, should be the data that you have registered to the MR. Uh, for some reason, it always likes to do MR for both of them. Uh, we'll select the single frame first. Um, and then open the BOIs. And you should see them overlaid. And so there will be two things to do for the analysis. Uh, the first is to get the um, From the, the single frame data, we'll want to get the statistics out, which will just be the mean activity value. Um, and you can see these are in kil kilobecquerel per cc. Um, what you can do is copy this to 
the clipboard. You can open an Excel file. And what I typically do is just paste that in. I'll have a second tab, which is um, raw data. And we don't need all of, all of the information from this. Really what we need is uh, are these two columns, the average and the standard deviation. And so what I'll do is, um, so this will be animal ID treatment region. Okay. those and then and so then we would do our So you'll, you will have to know um, the order of the regions. Uh, but this is how we start to set up our data. And so if the data gets set up this way, then um, Brad has a pretty standard method for sorting the data and getting averages and analyzing it. So um, this extra sheet you can just keep pasting over and just copy the averages over and populate this data sheet. So, um, <clears throat> so then you can close this and then what you would do is switch over to the dynamic data set. Contrast would be different. So we can bring that back. And so now what we want to do is the kinetic analysis. Um, and what we'll do is there's this button right up here, which is the general kinetic modeling. And we just hit that button. And the first thing it does is it displays the time activity curves for all the regions. And um, you can just hit send set. And what it does is it sends it into the kinetic modeling module. Um, <clears throat> I've set up in my preferences that this is the default modeling. Uh, I'll show you really quick how you can change that. If you come to the main window and do configure, then um, let's see, uh, under users, PCAN models, uh, these are all the kinetic models. And what you can do is you can take any one of these and move it up. So what I've done is I'll take the reference tissue and send it to the bottom but you can use these to move it in order. And that's how I get it to be the default uh, kinetic modeling. Uh, so it'll be useful to change it in your configuration for that. Uh, I'm just gonna cancel that. <coughs> and so um, the reason to name the, cere the region cerebellum, oh, so I don't have it named cerebellum for this. Um, and so you can see here that the reference is uh, one underscore zero. So it just took the first one. 
So I'm actually going to exit this. And what I'll do is rename this to Cerebellum. Hit this again. And so what you'll see is the last one is called Cerebellum. I'll send it. And now instead of selecting one underscore zero, uh, it's selected the reference tissue as cerebellum, uh, because typically cerebellum will be a reference tissue for this model. So if you name it cerebellum, then it will select it automatically. And it'll select it for all of the regions. So there's a couple of things that you need to do before um, fitting the data. Um, <coughs> the first is in extras tab, you'll want to hit parameter initialization and also random fits. Um, and you can keep that at 20. Let's go back to tissue. And then we'll want to uh, change over to the weighting tab. And we don't want constant weighting. We want to have a calculated weighting. And we'll do frame duration and frame midtime. That only does it for the selected region. Uh, since we have lots of regions, we want to apply it to all of them. So what you do is come down to copy to all regions down here. And select model and click it. And so now what will happen is uh, oh sorry, waiting. You want to click on waiting and copy that to all of them. And so now what you'll see is the waiting will have changed for all of the regions sure you do that. And then at that point you're ready to just hit uh, fit all regions and it'll do a fit of all the regions. And what you'll see is um, the this window has updated so that there's now a value for R1, K2, and binding potential. Um, you can look through these if you want. Um, Basically what you have uh, over here in the data window where the points are displayed is that there are the individual data points uh, in green and then the blue line is the kinetic fit. Um, and so if you're curious about this, um, the goodness of fit is kind of shown by the percent standard error and the lower the percent standard error the better the fit. So. If we look through these quickly, you can kind of see that they're all fitting pretty well. The K2 here is getting a little bit high. Um, we'll see if there's any that look not good. Oh, they all look pretty good. Uh, Cerebellum doesn't get a fit because um, it's its own reference region. <coughs> so. The way that we save that we save this data in two ways. The first is to um, view the output data. Uh, so this is the output for each region, including the um, for each region. We'll copy that to the clipboard, and again in the Excel file, um, we'll create a new sheet. Um, so we can copy over the same. Um, and copy this to the clipboard again. And so, um, what we want to copy is essentially this whole block of data um, for only the regions. You can skip over the average, medium, and standard deviation down here. 
uh, but we want to copy all of these columns so that we have a record of the fit. And then we just paste that in. Um, so be aware that when you um, dump the uh, single frame data, the mean values, the first line is the group average. So you don't need to copy that over. So you should just copy uh, only the region data. Um, so this, this first one was accidentally the um, group average. So I'll delete that out. And then what you would do is. Copy those two columns without the group data and paste those in. Make sure to get the cerebellum. Because there will be a cerebellum mean value for the single frame. So that's better. Um, so that's why there were um, two extra. OK, um, so then the last thing to do uh, with the kinetic da data is um, we want to save this output so that we can bring it back and look at it. And the way that you do that is come down to the little tab down here and open it up, and then save CAM file. Um, and so, and kind of save it as the standard naming notation. And I, I have that in a, its own kinetic analysis directory. So, and that way we can, um, if I wanted to, I could come in and open the kinetic analysis for any, um, any animal any time point and see what was done. So if, if we had a question on one of the parameters, uh, we could come back and check to make sure everything was selected correctly. Um, so, and if you're wondering, this is kind of, <clears throat> if you're looking through these things, the things that I look for, um, if the standard error starts to get up near 20%, then that we have to start uh, looking at the data a little more carefully. Um, I think we've accepted up to 25%, but um, once it gets beyond that, uh, it means that the goodness of fit isn't there, and so there's probably not uptake of the tracer in that region, so no neural information. Um, and it just can't fit a good model to it. But that's it. <laughs>